Ainsworth's strain situation. So you need to be aware about the strain situation as a way of assessing attachment types and the three types of attachment, secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant. So the aims of Ainsworth and Bell's study was to produce a method of assessing the quality of attachment by placing them in a situation of mild stress. So they set up a controlled observation of a unfamiliar room and there were several episodes or sessions during um, the controlled observation. So 100 middle class American infants and the mothers took part in the study. Um, it involved the infants with their mothers and there were a set of predetermined activities, sessions, episodes, and they all lasted three minutes apart from the first episode. So the first session was the mother and child were introduced to the room so they could get used to it. Then the mother and child are left alone and the child can investigate the toys if they wish to. Then a stranger enters the room and talks to the mother and tries to approach the infant with the toy. The mother leaves the child alone with the stranger and the stranger interacts with the child. The mother returns to greet and comfort the child. Then the child is left on its own. The mother then returns and tries, oh, sorry, the stranger then returns and tries to engage with the child. The last stage is the mother returns and greets and picks up the child and the stranger leaves without the child noticing. So there were particular things that they were interested in. So they were particularly interested in separation anxiety. So um, how they felt when the caregiver, the mother, left the room. The willingness to explore the environment. So the new, novel, strange um, room that they'd been introduced to. Stranger anxiety. So how they responded to the presence of the stranger, either with the um, caregiver or without the caregiver. And the reunion behaviour. So how they uh, greeted the caregiver on the return of the mother. So it allowed Ainsworth and Bell to classify three broad attachment types. Securely attached, which accounted for about 66% of the children. Insecure avoidant, which was about 22% of the children. And insecure resistant, which was about 12% of the children. So conclusions were that the study showed that there was a significant individual differences between infants and that there were three main categories of attachment. The most common attachment type in North America was securely attached. And there seems to be an association between the mother's uh, behavior and the infant's attachment type. So if we look at the types of attachment in a bit more detail, so securely attached children are willing to uh, explore the environment. They still seek some proximity to the caregiver, but they were willing to explore the new situation. So the mother acted as a secure base. They showed moderate separation and stranger anxiety. So they did become upset when the mother left and they were wary of strangers. They did require comfort on reunions, but they were quickly comforted by the caregiver. So although they were upset at being left, they were quick to return back to normal. Insecure avoidant, the child explores freely and does not seek proximity to the caregiver. So the caregiver didn't act as a secure base. They didn't really show any uh, separation or stranger anxiety and they didn't require comfort upon the reunion stage. Insecure resistant, where the child is less likely to explore, they seek greater proximity to the caregiver. They um, are quite clingy to the caregiver. They show considerable stranger and separation anxiety. They got very distressed and they resist comfort when they are reun reunited with the caregiver. So they, they don't they find it very hard to be comforted by the caregiver and to um, end the distress that they had felt. So identify two infant behaviours that are characterised by infant resistant attachment. So less likely to explore the situation or mother doesn't act as a secure base, they're quite clingy in their behaviour, um, they resist comfort upon your reunion, they get very distressed um, when the mother leaves, they show considerable separation, uh, stranger anxiety, so just two of those. And we've got a situation here, a nursery school worker and her manager were chatting at the end of the day, how did the new toddlers settle, settle in? They behave very differently, replied the nursery school worker. Max was distressed when his mother left, but was happy to see her at the end of the day. Jessica arrived clinging to her mother and would not calm her down when her mother left. 
uh, William barely seemed to notice when his mother left and did not even look up when she returned. Name the attachment type demonstrated by each of the children in the conversation above. So you're just naming the three types. You don't have to explain why they are that. So Max is securely attached. Jessica is insecure avoidant, sorry, insecure resistant. And William is insecure um, avoidant. So go through that once again. Max is securely attached. Jessica is insecure resistant because... Um, she was very clingy, she's not willing to explore, and she is, can't be calmed down, very, very distressed at uh, separation. William is insecure avoidant because he didn't really show any separation or stranger anxiety and didn't really need comfort when his mum came to collect him. So in terms of evaluation then, so we have some uh, support evidence that the concept of the different attachment types can explain future outcomes and there's some val validity behind that. So secure uh, infants have greater success at school and more lasting romantic relationships, whereas insecure resistance is associated with bullying. There is some contradictory evidence. So um, some people suggest that there aren't three attachment types there, maybe some more. So some people didn't, children didn't, don't fit into the, the three attachment types. So there's atypical attachments and disorganised attachments, which Ainsworth and Bell didn't take into account. Um, other explanations, so temperament may be a confounding variable. So Kagan suggests that temperament, so the genetically influenced personality of a child, is what um, the strange situation is actually measuring, not the quality of attachment. And testable, so it is quite testable. It can be easily replicated due to the standardised procedures. And indeed, numerous studies have um, been carried out using the strange situation and have reported similar findings showing high reliability. However, imposed ETIC, the study was developed in one country and therefore um, it is based on American norms and values of what a healthy secure attachment type is and it might not be applicable to collectivist cultures of what America's and America and individualistic cultures would consider a healthy attachment type. So discuss the strange situation in a way of assessing attachment. So again, remember discuss means outline and evaluate. Um, it's important that it's saying assessing the type of attachment. So is it useful in assessing the type of attachment? Yes or no. So um, arguments and evaluation for it's good to assess the attachment type, so um, validity of the environment, standardised procedures, um, controls, less extraneous variables, and against it, so imposed ethic, um, confounding variables of um, temperament, etc.